Mike Sullivan, and welcome to the Mike Sullivan Show. Our topic this evening will be unions, where they're at, where they came from, and uh, what is their uh, present situation. Joining me are some, uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, uh, good old union guys. Uh, <laughs> to my right here is uh, Ed Kelly. Ed, it's, uh, you've been involved with unions, what, 20, 30, about 40 years? Over, oh, let's say under 40. Okay, <laughs> I was sort of pushing <laughs> the issue there. Right. Presently, he is uh, the uh, Project Director for the Charlotte Emp uh, Employment Project, is that That's correct? Right. That's correct. Next to him is Mike, uh, excuse me, I'm a little bit off there, Jim Pierce. Uh, Jim is a retired union representative. Uh, I'm going to say you've been at least 40 years with him. At right? least. All right, all right, I'm getting back <laughs> on track here. And next to him is Mike Spath. Mike is uh, Firemen's Association, local number 660, is that not sure. correct? Sure. I appreciate you guys being here on our show today to talk about uh, where unions are at, where they're going, and. Uh, get some understanding of exactly uh, what's the situation. Uh, I know we don't hear that, that much about unions that we did back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and uh, I guess the first question is, and I'll go with you, Ed, uh, where is unions? What are they doing right now, and uh, why are they so quiet? Well, I don't think they're so much quiet, Mike. I, I think it's a question of what's happening. Uh, the country is downsizing, and the union is, uh, I think, not so much caught by the tail, but they're saying, well, what are we going to do about this? You know, you know it's going to affect them a great deal. And it affects us all with the downsizing. No matter whether it's white collar or blue collar, you lay off a white collar, what are you going to do with this guy? He affects everybody else. Uh, he affects the fact that he may want some electrical work done. And he can't get it done by uh, a licensed electrician because he doesn't have the money to put it out. So then all of a sudden it's a trickle effect. It goes on down. And the unions have said a long, long time ago, you know, this robots and uh, the new technology. What are we going to do with the people that they particular area that does away with that job or a hundred jobs and we've seen thousands they don't have the answer I don't think they do I think they're dealing with a reactionary effect that we have to do something what are we going to do I don't think anybody's got the answer right now we don't know where we're going we don't know where it, it not only affects the United States it affects the whole world and that even makes it compound the unions here in this country there's more unions over overseas over in Europe that are doing quite well. They're well, doing better than what we are, and I don't like that. I mm -hmm. don't think any union member likes that. Any union official likes that. That's only temporary. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. Un yeah, unions exactly. have been there before. They're over 100 uh, years old. They've been down. There's no more union uh, horseshoe makers, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but they have other jobs, and it goes on and on. It's just a matter. We're in a little slump right now, and we'll jump out of it. We that's always happened did. before. Uh, well, hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am a little over 50. And I remember the Depression as a child and what happened. And when it gets down far enough, unions get, people get angry and they join unions. Sure. Then they get a little complacent and it drops down a little bit. Back at men in the 40s after the war, got down. And then all at once it jumped back up and on and on. And that's what's going to happen pretty soon. People have to get a little bit tired of what's going on, and then Absolutely. they do something about it. So sure. just be prepared. We have a new president of AFL-CIO. He's determined to do something about it. The people are wanting to do something about it. Just a matter of getting a little bit angry and a little more determined, and there we'll be. Mm -hmm. We're always there. <coughs> I, I think <laughs> along with Jim, the, uh, the public sector, uh, uh, fortunately, we're, we're enjoying some, some growth in the public sector, uh, more so than the private sector. The, uh, uh, you mean fire, like municipal uh, employees? Right, municipal employees, firefighters, uh, police officers, things of that nature. Um, as we become more concerned of, number one, working conditions, staffing fire trucks with enough people, and as, uh, as you're saying, uh, as tax dollars and guys are laid off, there's less tax dollars, and, uh, you know, the new trend is to uh, do more for less, uh, and that affects us all, so we have to be creative. How do we, how do we keep what we got? Mm -hmm. and, and a unified voice is the only way to do that. I, I know that also it seems like government uh, involvement uh, with unions go both ways. I know under Reagan, I don't think that uh, unions benefited in any, any way, shape, or form. Um, the one issue that comes to my mind is uh, the, uh, the laying off or, or the firing, I guess it would be. It wasn't laying off of the uh, air traffic controllers. Um, how do you feel, Jim? Do you think that that was a blow that the unions haven't quite come back from yet? Or do you think no, that that's a, just temporary day at the yeah. office? It, it taught unions right then what Reagan was, mm -hmm. and it takes a while to bounce back from that. But you know the air traffic controllers are now organized again. Right. They have I a union. I wasn't aware of that. Absolutely. They have a union. They're members of the 
Charlotte Labor Council. So you, no. you can't keep them down. Vote <laughs> uh, for the union labor. All they do, is, right, exactly. all they do <laughs> is hit us over the head, and it makes us angry, and we bounce back up after licking our wounds a little while. Yeah, the Traffic Controllers Union the, is in existence and is a member of the FLCIO. Mm -hmm. Again. And I think is, is uh, when you get into even our job, life safety issues uh, is not very uh, uh, popular thing to uh, to go out on strike. You know, we don't want to promote a strike uh, either ourselves. Uh, but there are some some things you have to make statements, and unfortunately, air traffic controllers got caught up in that. And it's a high profile job because you know there's a lot of airplanes flying around every day, and uh, you know if they're not uh, if they're unhappy and uh, or they're on strike, then that uh, there's a lot of life safety issues we have to deal with. So. Uh, it's maybe a little bit more of a high-profile situation than, than uh, normal. I know that a lot of individuals <coughs> expected when Clinton came into office that uh, he would, would be more pro-labor and would uh, do more than, say, past administrations have to, uh, to promote the uh, labor unions. Uh, he supported NAFTA. Um, do you think that that, uh, and we all know how the, the, union, uh, the mm -hmm. unions on the top level in Washington, their organizations responded to it. Uh, do you think that that was... Uh, a, another heavy blow that unions have to, to come back from, or do you yeah, think that I, that's I, just a... I think so, Mike. I think what happened with NAFTA, and, I, and I'm being very kind, I think <laughs> Clinton didn't realize what he was doing. I mean it, because I like Bill Clinton. I think he's a good president for what we have there, but I think, I don't think, I know, it's costing us jobs. Right. And how I feel about it with Charlotte Employment Project, we're dealing with the unemployed and underemployed, and we've got to do something with our unemployed and underemployed now. Mm -hmm. You take a person who loses his job at 40, he's got another 20 years, another 25 years that he has to be productive. He doesn't want to hear NAFTA is going to be something worthwhile, and I hope it will be, mm -hmm. 15 years from now. What's he going to do in that interim of that 15 years? He has to survive. Not only him, his wife has to survive, his children have to survive. Whatever happens to that individual, multiplied by, a lot affects of it. us all. A lot affects of us it all. isn't under our control. A lot of it yeah. is how long are the people in Mexico and Central America mm -hmm. and these other places going to put up with earning right. a dollar a day? Right. And they right. have right. strong right. unions right. in, in uh, Central and South America. Some, some, of, them, some of them do and some of them some don't. Of them. But the important thing is that as they see what's happening to them, they'll rise up, and then, of course, our unions will be here to support mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is not the first time this happened, either. You know, there was a, a move a number of years ago. In fact, there's been a move from the north to the south, from the south to Puerto Rico, from Puerto Rico to Guatemala. You know, this has been going on forever. Mm -hmm. and, and as people get angry enough, get abused enough, get exploited enough, they rise up. Mm -hmm. And then the companies uh, who have no... Uh, concern except the bottom line have to hunt for some more people right. they can exploit right. sooner or later they'll run out what are some of the uh, items right now I know that uh, in the past unions were, were in favor of things that we just take for granted now uh, the uh, eight-hour day mm -hmm. uh, um, abolishment of, of child labor setting standards in companies are they more concerned now with job security and, and, and retirement situations yeah, well, uh, you know I mean w what would you say is I, the I, items I think that are the important to them Probably the overall, uh, everything, all those issues you just talked about. Uh, I think in the hallway we were talking earlier, you know, uh, uh, unions, uh, a lot of people take for granted what they're doing today. Some of the benefits is in good pensions, is in Social Security, is in the eight-hour day, is in a mandatory 30-minute uh, lunch, 15-minute breaks, um, OSHA standards. All those things were guys the, like these, these folks here who put their jobs and, and even lives on the line back then to, to make a commitment to make those changes. And um, all those are important issues. Job security, absolutely. Keeping what you have, absolutely. The, but, that, that's what we're all about. But, it, it, you know, with unions, of course, when you say union, you're not talking about one big head and millions of arms and legs. You're talking about every pair of arms and legs has its own head, you know. So all of them are concerned about different things. Right. But unions are the one organization that's concerned about everybody. Mm -hmm. You see us doing... <coughs> Spending money and time and effort on the environment, on education, on health and safety, on people in other countries. We spend a tremendous amount of money and, and effort helping people in other parts of the country. So our interest is, is as broad right. as, as the exactly. spectrum. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, 
No, we're not going to let them, you know, short of, uh, we, may, we may do a lot of things. They're not going to get rid of our eight-hour day. They have a bill in Congress, Gingrich does, right. has a bill in Congress get rid of the eight-hour day, mm -hmm. but he's not going to work. And, and they, would, they would do it, and they'd get rid of health and safety, and they'd let, uh, what's his name, raise another 20,000 or 20 million <laughs> pigs down in eastern <laughs> North Carolina. But we're not going to let it happen, because us, no, with no, the no. environmentalists, with children and with women and with elderly are going to beat them. Right. Mm -hmm. Mike, another thing I, I think what happens, well, what has happened in this country is that the average person out there that will never be involved with the union. They don't understand, they don't know and understand what they have today and what they're losing, the benefits, Social Security, Medicare, all the benefits of health and welfare that, that we, we've got today where we can say if things really get bad there's somebody out there that will give you a hand they all were originated by unions mm -hmm. most people don't understand or know that and they they haven't a clue as to how much the unions have affected their lives mm -hmm. have brought up their standards especially after world war ii the unions they were really moving and they got things going they, they said you don't have to work at a job you don't have to no longer be in a sweatshop that we were back in the 20s and you know, right. a lot sooner than that you don't have to live like that. You can live with dignity. And most of the people, most of Americans don't realize they're able to do that today because of the unions. And that's not mm. saying the unions did everything. They sure moved it along. So right. Unions also along. have not really uh, had to welcome that in the South. Uh, <laughs> it was all, when, when I was uh, younger, I've always heard <coughs> and, and, and that unions were just a step away from Red China. <laughs> you know, well, that if you were a union uh, member, you were just, uh, you know, you, you, you had a red flag in your closet. <laughs> what else would you <laughs> teach those people if you own <laughs> That's good. a sweatshop in the South? You yeah. your best. And they mostly were uh, sweatshops they, in the yeah. South. They, they have access to the press that we don't have, the media, and now television and radio and and uh, there's a beautiful book written about the 34 strike in Gastonia. Yes, yeah. uh, and I also uh, be called PBS. And it's a, right. with the University of it's out of publication now because called uh, Mill Hands and Preachers and it told how preachers were used by the company to keep people from joining the union. Now it takes a while to get that out, but if mm -hmm. you look, we have a lot of unions. Charlotte Labor Council represents more than 10,000 union members and their families right here in this area. That's right. In fact, in that video, I thought it was unique that they, they put, this is the, the frame of, of thought pattern that they were going with in, in, in use of uh, pr priests and, and reverends, is that communist countries didn't believe in God, so therefore that if these individuals are related to someone, they, they, the union people don't believe in God. Yeah. And then that, point, that would legitimize <laughs> them to go out and, and preach against unions. But, but a lot of people belong to unions that they're not called a union. You know, if you're involved with the church, what is that? It's an organization of people it's working true. for mm -hmm. a common cause. I mean, there's a, uh, there's a lot of other things that we're involved with that you don't don't use here in North Carolina. And I, I'm not from here originally. I grew up in Cincinnati where my father was a firefighter and was a union member. And I was a firefighter in Florida where I was a union member. And I came here and was, you had to back up 30 years. But it's a U word. You can't say the U word. We're an association or we're this or we're that. The most powerful but, union uh, you know, in probably <clears throat> right now, especially with... The Re Republican crowd in, in office down there is an NAM. You know, that's a hell of a good union. Yeah. That stands and for? National Association of Manufacturers. Right. Mm -hmm. AARP, National that's Cha a union. Yeah, National a union. Cha uh, Chamber of yeah. Commerce, you know. These people are organized to that's just right. beat the hell out of workers. <laughs> and <they're> wor <laughs> it works sometimes, you know. But it's not going to work long and not long going to work forever. Mm -hmm. I know that uh, unions in the past, uh, again, going back to uh, some of the situations in the South, North Carolina is a right-to-work state. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly does that mean to you? I mean, is that, and I, obviously well, it's, it's not something that promotes unions. In fact, well, it's, it's a deterrent to them, if I'm not for, uh, for a public employer, it's probably a little tougher even than, than some of these folks who are involved with the private sector. We don't have the right to collectively bargain a contract. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the private sector does. We've. Uh, uh, we work, uh, we have a bill right now in, in Washington, National Collective Bargain Bill, Barbara Boxer's helped sponsor, we have a House and a Senate version. Uh, we work every year just to give us the right to be able to sit down and say, here's, here's our working conditions on paper. Uh, I can't say here in Charlotte, we have a good working relationship here in Charlotte. Uh, we're politically active and, and that's really where you have to do it. Uh, but it is kind of looked down on and, and it really makes uh, makes it tough for a public employer because it becomes tax dollars that you're 
that you're negotiating for and not uh, not a product that you're producing. So it's really tough here for us. Mm -hmm. it, makes, it makes it tough on everybody because it's not even a right to work. Mm -hmm. It's a right to work for less. It's a right to work without dignity. Young lady, I think, had the best description I ever heard when somebody asked her, she worked in a factory, what right to work meant. And she said that right, right to work means that the boss can look over my shoulder pat me on the butt and I can't do anything about it. <laughs> you know, that's what it means. So it, it's, it's just one of those hurdles we have to get over. And, and listen, we have, we have uh, I guess when I was director of the Industrial Union Department, we must have organized over 100,000 workers in the South in that seven or eight years that I know of. Uh, and, it's, and it's hard, but it can be done. And, and there are many of those that have 100% union membership and their factories with or without the right to work law. Mm -hmm. That's just one of those other little hurdles, hurdles. like Sue Myrick and people like that. Mm -hmm. you know? I know I, that, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I think the, the right to work sort of tells <coughs> the working person that you don't have a right to choose. Mm -hmm. And this respect that it's, if you're going to be union, it's like the union are forcing you to be union members. The unions are not forcing anybody to be a union member. They're right. saying, if there's something wrong with the workplace, and there shouldn't be any company in this country that treats their workers without dignity. Mm -hmm. That's morally wrong. And no one can fight that. The fact of saying the right to work means, well, we're going to treat you however we feel like. That's the way the unions see it. And if everybody would look at that a little deeper and try to understand what does that really mean, the right to work. Well, I don't have to be pushed into, i got to join a union. I have to pay dues. You don't have to do anything in this country, and I love it. The same fact is I don't want to be told that we're going to take your right away from you to choose a union. And I think this right to work is doing that. It's putting this into people's minds. It's into their mindset that stay away from those union people. They're going to cause you to lose your job, <coughs> close the plant down, or whatever it may be, and we'll move somewhere else. Well, you can't be moving all the time. That's impossible. I wish people would realize that. Not to be so afraid that if a union comes near them and their things aren't right where they're working. Not a good company. There are good companies out there. There certainly are. Mm -hmm. They treat their employees very well. I know them. We all do. There are companies out there that don't. And I think this right to work says we're going to treat you however we feel like. Stay away from those union people. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what that spells to us. Well, I know in the past also, and, and, and uh, just a minute ago, uh, Jim, you mentioned the new elections. Uh, the unions in the past have been... Uh, associated with a lot of corruption and you explained to me what the corruption was because I couldn't make the the relation between actual corruption and, and the union and you told me it was for example where uh, an arrangement would be made with an outside individual where all our trucks will stop at your service station or something and then there'd be kickbacks from that is that being cleaned up and what, is that being heavier what I, what I was saying to you that unions reflect the workplace and the company that that they work for if you've got a good clean company that doesn't deal in corruption, you generally don't have a union that deals in corruption. So where you have corrupt companies, you usually have a move towards corruption within the union because you have to deal with what you have. Mm -hmm. you know? So hopefully that will be a situation <coughs> to get cleaned up. I did want to, uh, and, and we're running out of time, it happens every time with me. I did want to mention, because this is uh, a, a thought that's in everyone's mind, when you say uh, the word union, Jimmy Hoffa's name comes up, uh, <laughs> in on sort of a uh, humorous note, uh, what do you think happened to Jimmy Hoffa? Mike, we'll start with you. Uh, well, they say he's buried at the uh, Bear Stadium in the end zone. I, you know, I don't know. But actually, what happened, uh, I don't know that anybody will ever know that. There, he's a, he's there's in there's the federal a, witness <laughs> protection. <laughs> right. <laughs> could be. So we're living the, the life of Raleigh as yeah. a government witness someplace. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I, I appreciate you being on the show. Uh, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, uh, again, uh, join me as always, uh, second Saturday each month, Mike Sullivan Show, 8.30. We'll see you then. Good night. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That's the way I like to talk, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah.